Hello everyone and welcome to Programming and Access 2013, the advanced course. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about running a command line or sometimes called a shell. Now a command line is something that we're probably much more familiar with in Windows, uh, although those of you who run Linux you often know about the shell. Uh, it's a way that you can issue a command using basically text to interact with your operating system. Okay, you just type in a bunch of commands on your keyboard and your operating system goes out and executes those commands. Well, uh, Windows, we have a, a special utility that I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. That If I just type in CMD, I'll get this command prompt and I can click on this and you'll get this black window. And oftentimes, if you've ever talked with your tech support, they'll probably ask you, uh, you know, if you're having some sort of network connectivity issues, they'll ask you to ping like Yahoo or something to see if you get some sort of reply. Okay, well, this ping is an actual executable that exists on your Windows operating system. And Yahoo.com is a parameter that you pass into the application to uh, go out and check to see if there is in fact a connection, get an IP address, how many uh, you know, how is there a response back? How long does the response take? That sort of thing. So uh, this is a command line. You're issuing a command when you do ping yahoo.com. That's an actual command that you're issuing. Well, in our example that I've set up today, I've got this logs folder here with our different log files that are text files, right? With our different information. And what you may want to do is, let's say that you want to uh, send out these log files on a weekly basis in an email, but before you do that, uh, you actually want to zip those log files into a zip file. Uh, and a zip file is basically a compressed file where you take all of these files that are here and you compress them into one file. So it's a much smaller file, takes out all the blank spaces and everything. Uh, and compresses it into a smaller file and puts everything into one file so it's easier to send. So uh, the utility that I have that does this is called 7-zip and you'll see in my C program files 7-zip directory is this 7z.exe file. Uh, and this is the actual executable file that I need to run in order to compress those files here in my logs directory. Now. I want to do that from my access application. And so I've got this form called form one with a zip log files full uh, button here. And I don't have anything on it right now. Some of you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, Steve, the last few videos you went through creating objects, going through the reference libraries and, you know, uh, instantiating objects and using those objects to zip files. Why can't we just do that here? Well, I'll show you here. If I go to the on-click event, go to my code builder, and I go up to tools and I go to references, you'll see there's nothing for 7-zip. Okay, 7-zip is not an available reference for access. So if I'm going to issue a command to my 7-zip uh, application here, I don't have any sort of dynamic library to work with to do my object uh, modifications with. I can't open an object and issue a command on it. I actually have to go outside of my access database and issue a command similar to what I did here with ping yahoo.com. And I'll show you that command. If I just go to uh, the directory where that um, where that 7-zip file is, so we'll go cd program files uh, 7-zip, you'll see there is my 7z.exe. So if I went 7z, and if you go to the 7zip website, you'll see that there is this a command that I can pass in a couple of uh, parameters to it, or arguments, to this a command, or, or this 7zip executable. And that will actually take and put all those files in this directory and put them into whatever I name this zip file. So the command that I need to issue here then would be a, so 7za, and then I need to say the name of my zip file, and I need to give the full path to that file. So I'm going to do c colon backslash northwind backslash, and I'm going to call this logs.zip. Now I need to pass in the directory. That would be c colon backslash northwind 
backslash logs and put one trailing backslash on there and I hit enter and you can see that that command that I issued right here let me just go ahead and highlight this for you this 7z command uh, or executable with the a command and a couple of parameters went ahead and compressed the files in my logs directory into this northwind logs zip file and if I go out here to um, if I go out here to my Northwind directory, you can see there's the logs.zip file. And if I open it up, there's the logs folder with the text files in it. So I've essentially taken everything in that logs directory and put it into this zip file. Okay, let me go ahead and delete this for now because I don't want you to get confused. It's gone, right? Okay, so this command that I issued is now gone. But you can see that this command that I ran up here is what I need to do in order to uh, compress my files. So since I can't create an object in my VBA code, there's a there's a special function that's available in your VBA code in Access, and for that matter, all your Office applications, which is just simply shell. Okay, and shell just requires a couple of parameters. First of all, what is the path name? Well, the path name to the executable is c colon backslash program files backslash seven hyphen zip and seven z.exe okay and then the second parameter is what is the window style so you can see here i can actually hide the window so it's sort of like taking this command line here this command prompt and just doing this get rid of you know you can either minimize it you can make it so it doesn't even show up as a window uh there's a whole bunch of different things so i have hide i have maximized and focus it minimize but give it focus minimize don't focus normal focus and normal no focus okay so normal is basically normal windows size or restored size so i can maximize minimize or go normal size or i can just completely hide it i'm going to go ahead and hide it but there's a problem here okay and that is i need to pass on these other parameters right i need to pass on the a command and the zip file and the logs so rather than shelling to just this executable, so it's a little deceptive in the way that the IntelliSense shows you, right? Because it says, after I do shell, it just needs the path name. Well, actually, it's not just the path name. It's the path name plus all this other stuff here, okay? Your different parameters. So I'm going to do c colon backslash. I need to give it the full path to that zip executable. So program files backslash 7 hyphen zip backslash 7z.exe okay so that's the full path and I've passed in all of the parameters okay so that's all good now I need to do I'm gonna do a VB hide and once again just show you that there is no logs.zip file back here currently so I'm gonna go up here to my zip log files let's go ahead and run this click on that and now we should see there's my logs.zip file and if i open it up there's our logs directory and the files so that worked fabulously right very simple very straightforward just use this shell function that's already built into access and do this right just put in the parameters make sure you pass in the full path to the executable pass in the parameters so everything that you would type basically here in the command prompt is what you put in quotation marks as your first parameter of the shell command now there is one caveat to this and that is what if i go let's go back to my northwind director let's delete the logs.zip file and what if the path had a space in it okay because if you look carefully here at this path the directory to my executable file has a space in it right but then the parameters that I pass in don't have any spaces in it. And this is often very confusing to the executable because the executable is expecting uh, no spaces between the, or a space to the executable means a new uh, parameter. Okay, so this is first parameter with a space. Then there's the second parameter with a space. Well, what if, instead of the logs directory, I wanted to compress the 
new logs directory with a space in it. So now if I go up here and I put a space between new logs, okay, so that's the directory I want to get. Let's save that. Now I think we're going to have a problem here, okay? So let's go ahead and zip the log files. And I go back here. Sure enough, there's my log zip. So everything looks great, right? Well, no. If you open it up, you'll see it's empty. And that's because the 7-zip went ahead and made the zip file, but it didn't really know what you were intending to compress. Okay, it wasn't able to access, essentially, this directory called Northwind new with a par extra parameter of logs. Okay, that's what it tried to do. It didn't know how to break this out. So what you really need are some sort of parentheses, or, or, I'm sorry, not parentheses, but quotation marks around this. And not every application will accept ap uh, apostrophes to, uh, to denote that this is one single parameter. Let's go ahead and try that, though, with this one. Uh, I haven't actually done this yet. Let me try. Oops, I had the wrong one there. Let's delete this. Okay, so let's try this with that parameter, uh, being you know surrounded by apostrophes, and take a look at the zip, the logs file that gets created. Nope, it doesn't accept apostrophes. So we have to do quotation marks around this parameter. Okay, that's how 7-zip uh, expects parameters to be introduced if they are paths that have spaces. You have to surround that path with uh, with quotation marks. Well, if I try to put a quotation mark around this, we're going to have a bit of a problem here because quotation marks is also how you figure out strings, right? So what you actually have to do is in order to say, no, no, this is literally a quotation mark inside of my string, is you have to double up the quotation mark. So I need to double up the quotation mark on both sides. So here I have a double quote in order to indicate, no, no, this is not, this actually needs to be a quotation mark inside of my string. And then I've done the same thing here. I've doubled up the quotation mark and then terminated the string here. Okay, so that's how I've done that. Now I've got my parameters surrounded by quotation marks. Let's go ahead and save that. And now when we try to execute this, let me just make sure the zip file gets deleted here. So let's delete this. Now when we go ahead and run this, let's see what we get in our zip for, uh, zip logs, uh, logs.zip file. There we go. There we can see new logs directory and there are our logs files. Okay, so there you go. That is how you can issue a command line, you can run the command line, essentially to go and execute some sort of command uh, outside of your Visual Basic application. Now in the next video, I need to actually show you there is a small little problem that some of you may encounter. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you in the next video and show you how to fix that problem.